Cleveland, Odessa, and Big Spring. We are Basin Trusted, Basin Proud. This is ABC Big 2 News at 5. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to ABC Big 2 News at 5 o'clock on this Friday. A different venue change, I would say. I'm Carson Bush Schost. And I'm Madeline Bierster, and we are here at the 37th annual Celebration of the Arts event at the Bush Convention Center in Midland. A lot going on tonight. So tonight is the $80 admission premier access. So a lot for those people that do show up and purchase those tickets. There's silent auction, live entertainment, dinner, lots going on. And then the rest of the weekend is actually free to the public. That's right. And this is a huge event the next few days. Uh, Maddie, we've seen different artists from all over, sculptures, paintings, drawings, jewelry, you name it. we got a lot to talk about. We have a lot of live interviews tonight. We're going to bring in our first interview tonight. It is Danny Oliva. He's the Executive Director of the Arts Council of Midland. And uh, Danny, i got to ask you, we'll pass the mic over to Maddie so she can give it to you. But uh, hey, 37 years running strong. Just tell us a little bit about the, the overview of this event. Sure. Well, Celebration of the Arts started um, in 1984 by a group of interested um, patrons from, of the arts in Midland. Um, at the time, there wasn't a local venue for local artists, and that's sort of how it has evolved from that. And over the years, it's changed, but we um, still have local artists, as well as this year we have artists from Arizona, California, and even New Jersey. Okay, so a lot of different talent from all over. How important do you think it is for those local artists to be able to showcase their work in their own city? Oh, I think it's great because it's it's very easy to do it when it's just in your own backyard. And it's also, um, you know, it gives sometimes an artist hasn't done a lot of festival um, shows. And so it gives them an opportunity to try it out, you know, where they're, where they're from, where they're comfortable. And their friends come and see them and buy stuff. <laughs> definitely, definitely a pro. Um, as far as the business and economic impact here for Midland, how big is this? I think it's really big, uh, particularly if you look at the last year um, with COVID and the pandemic, there have been um, art festivals in Texas. They're just starting up now. And so uh, that, that's a huge um, hit. Uh, just think about if you know somebody in the oil industry, for instance, that was um, laid off. It's the same thing for these artists. It's just a different field. And so it has a big impact on them personally. And um, I think economically uh, it helps um, the Arts Council because it is our fundraiser. But in addition, it gives us the chance to show off local talent, local visual and performing artists. Would you say that over you know past the past 37 years that the art industry here in the Permian Basin has grown? It's definitely grown. I, I think a lot of that has to do just with information and the internet and the availability of uh, different um, types of exposure to the arts. And in my 20 years, because this is my 20th one, um, I've seen a, a lot of change, but um, we still have some folks that they were showing their work 20 years ago. All right, hey, and, and tell us a little bit about this premiere party tonight. A lot of fun. People are going to be coming in. Tell us a little bit about that. The premiere party is uh, your chance to come out. You get um, kind of first crack at the artists and their work and to get to look at it. Yeah, and great. we have um, uh, planned uh, food and drink, and uh, there's live entertainment. We have a couple of guitarists that will be playing, and... Um, our sponsors have their own tables, and it's just a, a fun evening. There's even a silent auction. And like you said, you really get to meet the artists up close and personal. Talk with them a little bit about their work. Yes, it's, it's different than like a museum or a gallery because typically the artists are not there. And so uh, you walk in and you, you may read the labels, but in this case, you can walk up to the artists and see, you know, uh, not only see their work, but ask them questions, and uh, hopefully most of them be communicative with everyone. All right, Danny, thank you so much. So he's just one of many interviews we're going to have at 5 and 6 tonight. A lot of fun. Uh, but we also have a reporter here out in the field, I guess you would say, out in the other room, a Tatiana Battle. She is live talking to our first artist. We'll send it out to her. Hi, guys. You know, we're out here at the 37th annual Celebration of Arts event, and I have a very special person with me, Miss Rebecca Dodge. Now, tell me a little bit about your artwork here. This artwork is Texas as art. It's made from satellite imagery, using a lot of the infrared wavelengths to make the colors bright and pretty. 
perfect, perfect. And you know, it's something really unique about this artwork here. Um, a lot of people don't know that if you buy a piece like this, the proceeds go to a very, very on. Can you kind of elaborate on that? Yes, I still teach at Midwestern State University and there is a Texas's Art Fund there that has scholarships and research funds for students at 13 different universities in Texas, including UTPB, Midwestern State, Texas Tech, UT El Paso, so students can get into that fund and use it to help them with their education. That's fantastic. See, you guys, you can come out to the Bush Convention Center, and when you buy a piece like this, not only are you supporting local artists, but you're also pouring back into your community, which is so essential when it comes to young people, because really, you'd agree with me, they are tomorrow's future, right? That's right. right, and all of the students who can apply for these funds learning how to use this satellite imagery to manage natural resources and to protect them. Fantastic, fantastic. And like you were telling me earlier, some of these images are places that we might have been around in Texas. Yes, this art is of West Texas at this point, and it's mostly state parks and wildlife management areas. So you could see on one of these the Monaghan Sandhills State Park, for example. Yeah, wow, wow. What has been your most favorite part about, you know, getting into work like this? Well, just learning how to manipulate the images and, and turn them into different colors and, and make them look like a painting more than just a picture from, from space. Yeah, yeah. And how did you come about working on something like this? I mean, no one, I don't know if anyone even just thinks, you know, hey, I would take a satellite image and turn it into a piece of art. How did you, like, stumble upon that? Well, the USGS. Um, is funding me to do this artwork and they have been doing Earth as Art for almost 20 years so they have galleries that are absolutely astounding and I aspire to be as good as they are at this and I'm working on it I'm not there yet but that was my inspiration Earth is Art perfect perfect well like we said earlier you can come out all weekend long Bush Convention Center right here in Midland and see more artwork just like this one and support local artists. I mean, what better way to spend your weekend than to celebrate art and the artists behind the art. So thank you so much, Rebecca. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you yes. for the opportunity. An absolute pleasure, and I can't wait for more people to come and see your fantastic work. Thank you. Thank you. That's right, guys. Like I said, all weekend long. All right, long, Tatiana, thank out, you very much. Some really some great impressive artwork, pieces music, there by Sky. Good fun. And it's right here at the Bush Convention Center in downtown. All right, thank you, Tatiana. Some really impressive pieces of art there by Sky. Oh, we got another local artist here. We got Andrew Lawson. You are from Midland, Texas, Andrew, and uh, you're just a couple booths over from us right now. Tell us a little bit about your art. It's very interesting, and uh, I, walking up to it, I thought it was a, a, a picture, but then you get up close and you realize you're doing all this by your hands. Yeah, for sure. It's pretty uh, drawing, kind of drawing intensive work, but uh, the, the work I do is called printmaking, so it's kind of a very archaic form of art making where I'm I'm etching the images into copper plates using acid and also hand engraving the images and I use big printing presses and it presses the impressions into paper. Oh. So there's my multiple originals off of the same blocks or plates or whatever that, you're pressed on. That sounds really complicated. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a lot of, <laughs> lot of uh, technique and a lot of... Uh, process going on in that type of art making. Okay, so, so we, we have some video uh, of your work here. Tell us a little bit about, now you were up in Lubbock teaching, doing some school, now you're in Midland, kind of art community. Tell us a little bit about Midland, the art community as a whole. Yeah, it's, you know, it seems like within the last, I'd say, five or so, um, it seems like Midland's made some great strides as far as um, just creating more awareness about art within the community. I know there's multiple galleries that have opened up and um, is there, there's been a lot more just public um, kind of public engagement from us you know 
organizations like the Art Council or these galleries or open art spaces that are, you know, creating more of a, you know, artsy vibe in Midland, we could say. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely growing. It, it, it wasn't much, you know, I'd say 10 years ago, but it's getting better and better, it seems like, as more people are getting involved. So Yeah, and the downtown area as a whole with Centennial Park, yeah. some of the shops opening up, really maybe just inspiring the whole art scene as well. For you, kind of what makes you tick? What inspires you to, to put together some of this art? Oh, on my art in particular, it's a, a lot of social commentary, kind of pop art, social commentary stuff going on, um, you know, stuff with the current social, political climate, I don't get too political, but kind of social climate, and um, yeah, I draw a lot of influence from, from all over the place, but there's a lot of current, like, kind of pop surrealism art that I really enjoy, that I kind of follow, I guess you'd say. Awesome, so, okay, yeah. and, and uh, well, well, for you, I mean, being back here, we've had the pandemic, to be back with some of these kind of artists in, the, in this realm, how cool is that for you? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, I did some shows earlier this summer, and uh, as far as most of us can tell, it's, they've been very successful. You know, all, everyone's ready to get out of their homes, ready to do stuff. There seems to lot, be a lot of disposable income or disposable money available right now that people are buying a bunch of art. So hopefully it'll be a good show. And, yeah. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. By the way, it, some of the coolest business cards I've ever seen oh, here. Thanks. Stop by Andrew's, just a couple booths over from us. Uh, we are going to um, be previewing a very cool glass artist. That's going to be coming up later in the block. But first, we're going to toss it over to Chief Meteorologist Chase Menendez with the latest on that. Chase?